Amen. Can you give God praise for that? Uh, you had a fabulous year in this past year, and we're looking forward to a great and glorious year in front of us. I'm going to ask our missionaries to come to the front, Wendy Reese of Magdalene Home, Jim Smithies of the Bee World Ministry, and Lasulo Lasulo, who is our representative here from our church in South Africa ministering today. We are, we're blessed to have these three missionaries with us today. Wanted you to just get a grasp of what they're facing, where they're at, what they're doing, so that we could pray for them, number one, and so that your heart could be touched today to be involved in where God has placed them today. Wendy Reese and her family oversees the Magdalene ministry. You have recently been introduced to that and been involved in that. But I wanted to ask her for a moment what it is that is the greatest need in the Magdalene challenge right now for what you're doing. Well, our biggest physical need um, is right now to raise monthly income to be able to keep the doors open. Um, we, as some of you know that know me, had no idea we would be open this soon. We were on a mission to find land and to build a home or purchase a home. But a couple of months ago, the Lord must have known the need better than I did because he gave us a home for a dollar a year. And so it shifted our focus immediately from building to now operating. And we're going to have, because we don't have a rent payment, we're still going to have about $5,000 a month just in keeping the doors open, gas, food, that kind of thing. But, and we're about halfway there. We need another about $2,500 just to be able to prepare to be able to take care of these girls every month. And so long term, we still have plans to find land. We're believing that the Lord is going to give us land so that he will tell me where to build. I don't have to make that decision on my own. And then we will take the money that we've already raised and we will purchase either um, building materials or he might give us a home again. I don't underestimate the Lord and what he can do. But that money that we raised ahead of time for building is in a separate building fund because that's what I said I was using it for and I'm not going to not do what I said. So we are now looking for operating funds for keeping our doors open. That's your biggest need now. Yes, sir. What is your, what is your greatest prayer point? Not only can we help uh, financially, but if people, you know, just on a daily basis can join your hands and heart in prayer, we can get a lot done. I was not prepared for the spiritual warfare that comes with this ministry. We're in a battle for generations of people. Years from now, when we're dead and gone, the work that we're doing right now will affect generations. And the enemy knows that. And so the enemy is working so hard on these girls to give them fear and to keep them in bondage. And so when we talk to them and they come to the home and they see it, they love it. You can see it in their face. They want to be there. But then when they leave, the fear takes over. And it's so hard for me personally because I am that girl. And I want to move them into my own home. But the Lord, I know he didn't open us to just leave us there. I know he knows who needs to be there. But I can't fight this battle by myself. So I need so much prayer for these girls and for the enemy that tries to mess with my thinking. And I just know that the Lord knew when we needed to be open, and he has us there and ready. But he, he, he has to help me get these girls not to be afraid to take that first step of faith to change their life and the life of their baby. All right, the prayer point she has is that we are facing a generational challenge and what we're accomplishing today 
is providing generational forgiveness and restoration for tomorrow for these families. Jim Smith, he's heads up B World, a ministry to Burma. Uh, he can give you more facts on that, but he is, he is in a unique ministry. He's preparing other pastors, other leaders to help reach a world that is steeped in darkness. And the best way to do it is to train people there and be able to put the gospel on their shoulders. Jim, tell us, what is your greatest challenge today facing Burma today? B-World only goes into countries that are persecuted or oppressed. Everywhere we go, it's illegal for us to be there. And I think it's fascinating uh, that Wendy's point is almost the same point as mine. It's a generational battle. You and I can't go to Burma, build a ministry, build a church, have a crusade. What Don is saying is we go, we train 10 to 12 to 15 men for three years. And at the end of that time, they go and they train 10, 10 men and 10 men and 10 men. And it's a multiplication ministry, exactly like Jesus Christ did with the disciples, with 11 guys. He changed our lives in Texas forever that far away. That's what we're doing in Burma, but it's generational. The biggest need we have is for these men to be protected when they begin their second generation and third generation groups, when they're outside from under my wing, very similar to what Wendy is describing. The enemy attacks. They don't have resources. They don't have the confidence. But this is how Jesus changes countries forever is by multiplying uh, small groups of men who become uh, large enough to change a country. My 25 students are now training 250. Multiply that by 10. Multiply that by 10. And you're in the thousands of people who've been trained in the word of God, uh, what they do not have, sort of infiltrating a society that hates Jesus Christ and changes it forever. Our biggest need is for them to be provided, to be successful, be protected in the second, third generation multiplication. So what is the prayer point for you today? Again, so similar to Wendy. There is spiritual warfare that dominates Burma that says you have to work for your salvation. We are justified by faith, therefore we have peace with God. The even the Christian, even those who name the name of Christ, live in fear of losing their salvation. The power brokers continue to teach that you can lose your salvation, so they stay in power. And so we come in with justification by faith. Uh, you're, you know, Paul says any other gospel is not even the gospel. And so the the spiritual attack in Myanmar is to cloud the truth that Jesus Christ is enough. You're saved by faith in Christ. That's the desperate prayer is that Myanmar will be set free from the blinding of salvation by works into the freedom and the power and the life of justification by faith. Yeah. Sulo represents South Africa from the beginning in our church we adopted missionaries to help represent us in other parts of the world, and we brought them into our system. And they've been faithful partners with us for these last seven or eight years, and uh, we have been to them. Lusula, what is the greatest need you have going today in the ministry in South Africa? Um, firstly, thank you so much for your support, and for the long tenure of relationship with uh, us and the ministry there. Um, I would say the greatest need is threefold. Firstly, our goal is raising leaders. Um, our mission is to plant local churches, raise leaders that would lead the work so that when we leave, the work continues. And in this coming year, uh, actually, the project began last year, 2014. We stepped from Cape Town, the work that you helped us establish and doing very well, and moved into Africa, went to Namibia, and planted another work there. And when I head back 
in a few weeks, we are going to train leaders and help them to grow to a place where they can lead the work. That way, they begin to take care of the project. Uh, we also have uh, children, about five to seven children that we have adopted that uh, came from HIV and AIDS affected families. They lost their parents uh, because of HIV and AIDS. And we have adopted these kids. We take them to school uh, and uh, supply the school supplies, as it were, and help them uh, with uh, just health needs. So we have kind of adopted, and uh, that's a prayer point. That's also an area where we can uh, help them. Uh, they look to us as their parents. Uh, the third need is really for me and my family for protection. There's a lot of trouble because we are now not only in Cape Town, but moving into Africa and started work in Namibia. Um, the challenges of permits as you move from one country to another. Uh, I remember my last trip when I went to South Africa, I spent almost three hours at the airport because they could not just uh, allow me to go in and more especially when they understand your mission in the place. Uh, that's an area that is influenced by Muslims. Uh, not the very aggressive Muslims, but they're very subtle. And so they'll block whatever you want to do. Uh, over 80% of our membership, both in Cape Town and Namibia, have been converted from Muslim to Christianity. And we really thank God for that. That's our goal, to see the name of Jesus uh, extended to them. And your prayer point? Pray for us um, as we step out. We need protection. And many times I have to be away from my family. And uh, it's kind of hard. Uh, pray for our financial support. Uh, pray for the churches. One of the greatest needs as we step out is to ensure that uh, they get into good kind of worship. And so we have to help them to come up with uh, instruments and supply Bibles to some of them that uh, have never seen a Bible. And those are some of the needs that uh, uh, we could pray for. Pray for the salvation of the Muslims. And uh, we can talk about it, but we believe that God loves them and he wants them to come into the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 I want to ask you to stand with us, if you would, and reach your hand towards these missionaries who represent the missions field here before us this morning. Would you reach your hands towards them? I'm going to ask you missionaries to join hands if you would and be a team for us this morning. And we, we pray this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost that the divine authority and the dominion of Christ would be upon you, that you would be going in his name carrying out his work and doing his bidding. That there would be nothing you could not accomplish and there will be no mountain too high but what you will be able to climb it. And there will be no stream too wide but what you can cross it. I pray that in the name of Jesus of Nazareth that you would represent the kingdom well and souls would be won to Christ. Needy families would be lifted from their barrenness and their affliction, and lives would be transformed because you cared and put your life in his hands. So in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, let missions flourish in 2015 because we all care and because we're all involved in this act of work. In the name of Jesus, and everybody said amen. amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated now. I'm going, to, I'm going to challenge you for just a moment in the word of God before we come to a place where we can surrender our, our own commitments under the theme, Lord send. Matthew 9, verse 38, it says, Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore to send. To send out workers into his harvest field. A Russian proverb says, it is the same with men as it is with donkeys. If you hold them well, you must get a good grip on their ears. 
And I'll tell you, if today's message is going to grip your heart, I must get a good grip on your ears. I must be able to get into your knowledge. If today's message is going to grip your heart, we must hear what God is saying. Unless you hear me today and feel the conviction of the holy challenge in this room today, you will not be changed and you will not become one of those who will join and will help us enable the church to send workers like these on the front seat. There is a saying, you will never get a second chance to make a first impression. And I'll tell you, you will never get a second chance to respond to God's opportunity to make a difference in the world. Now, like this one today, this is a one of a kind. It'll never be repeated again. There will be other chances down the road, but there will never be another service like this one. So we have to get a good grip on what God is saying to us about the lost, about the needy, about the helpless, about the cast down and the forsaken. Peter was looking into the face of a begging man at the gate beautiful and said to him, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I'm going to give you. God is not asking you to do something you cannot do. God is asking you to give what you have in your hand. He's asking you to do something you can do. And that is say to the man, get up and walk. Get up and walk. I'm going to help you get up. He reached out his hand and lifted him up. And God gave the man healing grace. God is not putting something on us that we cannot do. Missions 2015 will be a story that we write in this new year. Excuses and unanswered promises will not change the landscape of the begging in a lost world. There's nothing more genuine in your Christian witness than your personal story that says, let me help you walk. Let me help you get up off this pallet. There are people in Burma that Jim Smith is just taking by the hand and lifting them up. He is saying to me, let me help you. And it's bringing transformation to those that he can touch. And you know what? It's not just bringing transformation to that person, but it's being repeated over and over and over again. It never ends. There's a young woman who is destitute and whose future is up for grabs. But Wendy Reese is standing in the gap, and through Magdalene Ministry, they're going to open physical dorm doors to a warm and resolute future. But also a spiritual doors to a world of forgiveness that will bathe their soul for all eternity. That's what's taking place. Their family is trapped in a culture of darkness and loss that Lasulo is introducing them to a divine life that gives them hope, that gives them a reason to live and a significance for life. There's a Chinese proverb that says, great blessings come from heaven. Small blessings come from man. And I have to tell you that I believe it's through small blessings that we open the doors of heaven for great blessings to come. We can't do great blessings today, but we can do small blessings. You know, every breath you breathe is a gift from God. It's a gift from God. But if we don't breathe back out, we cannot breathe in fresh air. It's an exchange. We must be ready to breathe out. I'm asking Cross Point today to consider what is it God is saying to you about breathing out, giving up, doing something for 2015. When Jesus saw the crowds in Matthew 9, 36, it says he saw them because they were harassed and helpless. 
and he saw them like sheep without a shepherd. So he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but there are few workers. He said, I have a resolution for that. Pray. Send workers into the harvest field. So ask the Lord this morning in your heart of hearts, what is it that God is saying to you about sending out workers, sending out in whatever capacity or way in which you can do it? First of all, Jesus is a problem solver. He doesn't just look at issues. He says, I don't have silver and gold, but what I do have, I'll give you. I'll get you up on your feet. You've got other problems in the future, but I'm going to get you on your feet. You're going to be walking when you leave here. He says to the harassed and the helpless, be free. Be filled. Go and sin no more. Jesus is not only a problem solver. Jesus is a savior to sin-stained lives. People who are bound in sin. He said to you, neither do I condemn you. Rise, get up and walk. I came not to judge you as sinners, but to save you. And in Matthew 9, 1 through 8, the paralytic came to Christ. He said, I'm not here to cause your discouragement to worsen. I'm here to set you free. Take heart, your sins are forgiven. Finally, Jesus is the promise of eternity. He's the one that gets us on a road to complete recovery, forever recovery. This life is temporal. It's short. It is going to end much sooner than you think. What about eternity in front of us? What are we going to do with eternity? Well, he said, don't worry about this life. Don't worry about tomorrow. Here's what you should do. Seek first what God is saying to you about your day, about your life. So I ask you, do you grasp this morning Christ's value? God wants you to get a grip on his heart and his values. We face the greatest opportunities of any generation. This is the day the Lord has made. On my way here this morning, I prayed that prayer. Did you? This is the day God made, and I am going to rejoice. Secondly, we face the greatest responsibilities of any generation. What Wendy is saying, she's facing responsibilities that are awesome. And you know what? In the physical, frightening. But with God, all things are possible. The greatest privilege of any generation we face. We are facing the opportunity to change the world. This is the final generation. All historians, Bible historians believe that. This is the final chance to throw out a lifeline. This is the final choice to make your life count for God and for Christ. Faith promise is what we do. We do not follow up on our faith promise cards and say, you said you would, you are. We say, make this between you and God, and let's do something to change the world. I'm going to ask you to stand with me, please, all over the audience. I'm going to ask our ushers to hand out faith promise cards down the aisles, give you a faith card. Hand them out, guys. We're going to sing a chorus of worship. We want every one of you to take a faith promise card. Whether or not you fill it out or not, your business, but you take a card as they come by to give you one. And we're going to fill these out in a moment and return them. And if you don't want to fill one out today, take home and work, think about it and pray about it. We're open for that. We do not want to pressure you. We do not want to stress you out. 
We do not want to add to your burden. We're just saying, why don't we join as a team? I've got my card here. I got another person's card here. We're going to put them in. Would you put your card in? And in 2015, let's make a difference in our world. And I'm going to ask that our missionaries go and stand in the aisles in a moment. And we're going to, we're going to pray and ask God to give us the ability to figure something out that God is saying for us to do. Now, this should be beyond, above what you normally give to the treasury of the church, to the general budget of the church. If you take from that, instead of go above that, then we're just robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's not going to work. So, I'm going to pray with you. God, I, uh, I'm so humbled. I can be a part of a world-changing business. And when I face a Sunday like today, my heart trembles within me because I know that if I'm unsuccessful today, souls will suffer. Hurting people will not be touched. and Lives will not be changed. It's only that if I've got a grip on their ears and they hear when I'm saved and are willing to respond and put their faith and their trust in you. I pray, Holy Spirit, get a good grip on the ears and the hearts and the values of our people and get them to respond the way you want them to. Fill out a card that will say, this is my way, this is my way of voting what I would like to see done in the harvest field today. So in the name of Jesus, do it now. Do it now. Amen. If you would, if you would just take, fill out the card, simple, and put on it your monthly faith promise and your annual total. Prepare it and just raise your hand. One of our missionaries is going to be in the aisles now. And we've got other people who are going to be helping take up the cards. Don't hesitate to raise your hand as we sing this course and say, pick up my card. Would you do that? All right, let's sing together and worship God together. We're declaring. We're declaring that your kingdom has come. We're declaring that your kingdom is here. Sing it again. We're declaring. We're declaring that your kingdom has come, oh Lord. We're declaring that your kingdom is here. The whole earth is filled with your glory. The heavens declaring your praise. The nations are filled.
I pray that as you have responded, God will honor you and he will bless you. And those of you who want to take your card, go home and think about it and pray about it. Give it later. We are perfectly honoring to that. I thank you for hearing these missionaries, for hearing the heart of your pastor today and responding. Lord, put your divine will in our lives. Accomplish your plan. Let your church stand up healthy and responsive to the challenge of 2015. And may we take the hand of Almighty God and march into our future with expectation, with hope and faith in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.